Hey, Dog Nation, I'm Brandon Adams. Happy to have John Stinchcomb on hand as well for this edition of Dog Nation Freeze Frame, presented today by Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Obviously, the big news from the Georgia program this week has been the injury to Georgia wide receiver George Pickens. And last night when Georgia coach Kirby Smart spoke to reporters, he talked about all of the potential UGA playmakers that could have a chance to step up and need to step up while Pickens is sidelined, even if Pickens does eventually return at some point during the 2021 season. One of the names that Kirby mentioned was Georgia tight end Darnell Washington. Washington is a guy we'll take a closer look today at here on this Dog Nation freeze frame and find out all the ways in which Washington, with his unique skill set, athleticism, size, the entire package, might be able to help Georgia here this year. Before that, let me remind you that this is brought to you today by our friends at Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Certainly, they want to step up to the plate to you, uh, take care of you when it comes to uh, all the foundation waterproofing uh, issues that you might be dealing with. That's what a ESOG can uh, step up and help you with. Of course, they are proud partners of UGA, make some really fun to do business with, and they're really easy to get in touch with. Number to dial, 678-ESOG now. That number, once again, 678-ESOG now. They'll take good care of you. You see those cracks showing up in your foundation. You see that water creeping in, especially after we had storms, a lot of rain last night. Engineered Solutions of Georgia is the one to know, the one to trust for all of that. They've been great friends of ours here at Dog Nation for a long time. It's great to have them with us here as a part of Dog Nation Freeze Frame. And as I said before, don't forget, proud partners of UGA there too. So if you foundation waterproofing needs, make sure you check out Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Give them a call, 678-ESOG now. That is 678-ESOG now for Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Speaking of Darnell Washington, last night, Thursday, when Kirby Smart was talking about reporters mentioning Washington as one of those guys that has a chance to step up, he talked about what he's seen from Darnell in his first year on campus, why this spring is pivotal for him, and exactly what else could be on the horizon for this very impressive former five-star tight end here during the season of 2021. This is Kirby Smart on Darnell Washington. And uh, he's he's grown a lot. He's a lot smarter. He's in better condition. He's in better mental toughness state. You know, part of being a good player is pushing through practice and and being able to sustain. He he, he struggled to sustain through tough practices last year, and uh, he's done that this year. He's he's practiced a little harder. Um, he's doing some good things. He's still you know really big. I mean, he's two hundred seventy five, two hundred eighty pounds. So he's a different kind of matchup guy. Of course, we bring in our terrific analyst for all of this, John Stinchcomb, the former UG All-American. And, John, you're going to go through a lot of what Darnell can do for Georgia. But when you hear Smart from last night talking about the size that Darnell brings to the table, 275, nearly 280 pounds, that's obviously a huge football player at almost any position, certainly a tied in in the modern game. That's pretty big. Do you ever worry that maybe he's too big? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of fans, as soon as they heard that 275, 280 number, they're going, ooh, he's a couple of hamburgers away from sliding in and becoming the next Jason Peters as a <laughs> tight end transitioning to a tackle. But, you know, the way they, these guys are built, he's 6'7". It spreads out, and, and I'm sure he is impressive on the hoof. But uh, having played with Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham, was he's another 6'7 guy. He weighed in at 270, and never once did he look like this massive, uh, thick player. It was just he's 6'7". The weight gets spread out and still able to run across the middle. Now, Darnell's a big man. I mean, you, you watched him play last year, and you've seen some of the clips of, of what they're doing in spring ball. He is that matchup nightmare, uh, and it's just, a, as Coach Smart's saying, trying to keep him on the field more. But 275 and 280 uh, g- gets me excited because – there's not many cornerbacks or safeties, for that matter, that want to see that coming down the field headed for them. Well, as a matchup nightmare, let's look at all the ways which Georgia can use him. I want to show you this freeze frame to begin with here from the Missouri game back in December, a day in which Washington really, in a lot of ways, had a coming out party with a couple of big catches there in that game. And, John, on this first image, you see Darnell kind of not hand in the ground, lined up and you know, kind of a flex-type position there behind the line of scrimmage certainly a creative way to use him, which is a little bit different than maybe you see tight ends used at times uh, in that kind of stand-up position there and what is a little bit of a bunch formation. What does Georgia get from Washington when he's lined up that way? Well, just variety. I think, you know, every defensive coordinator, the first thing that they look at before they call a play is what's the personnel grouping? What's the offense deploying at them? And 
you know, it's 21 or 12. The, the, those are your base offenses, either two running backs and a tight end or two tight ends and a running back. And they're trying to match their personnel against that sort of deployment. So when you've got a guy with Darnell's capability and you can line him up at different places, you can really create these mismatches that George is hoping for. And, you know, you put the two letters of TE next to his name and you automatically think, He's going to line up next to the the tackle and just be an inline hand in the ground tight end. And, you know, as you see in this first picture, there's a variety of ways that you can use it. In fact, let me show you the next one here. You're talking about variety of ways. This truly is a modern viewpoint on a tight end. The fact that in this particular case, you see him lined up all the way out wide in this same game. And obviously he's got the athleticism to potentially put that on, you know, make good use of that alignment. But as you've told me before, when it comes to you know, Todd Munkin, that's also a potential clue about how opposing defense is looking to defend UGA as well. Yeah, so, so Munkin or any offensive coordinator in this country, they want to give as much information as they can to their quarterback before the ball is snapped. And when you, you split out your six seven monster tight end as your widest wide receiver, you pretty clearly can figure out whether the defense is going to be playing zone or man. If they've got a quarterback matched up against him, pretty sure it's zone, right? But if you're, if you're walking a safety or a linebacker out and covering him up, well, then, you know, he's, you've given your quarterback some information to use just by alignment. So you can see just in the first couple shots, we've yet to see him put his hand in the ground. Um, and, and defenses are having to figure out ways to account for uh, various weapons that Georgia puts out against them. And, of course, we will show you a hand on the ground here as more of a traditional tight end. John, when you've watched Darnell closely, we're going to look more at him as a blocker before we're done here with this conversation. But how much of a willing blocker do you see? You know, some people say in the case of someone like, say, Kyle Pitts, someone like that who's going to go very high in this year's NFL draft that – Blocking is something maybe that he tolerates, but not necessarily something that he's looking to make a name for himself on. How much of a willing blocker do you see when you look at Darnell Washington? Well, I think you brought up a great name. Kyle Pitts is kind of the college standard right now. At least he was in 2020 of what, quote unquote, a tight end. He, he didn't put his hand in the ground very often. He was, uh, I think he was an able blocker, but probably not always um, the best at it. Now, with Darnell, you watch, really, you're going back to his high school days, and you saw his playmaking ability down the field, but you saw some pretty crushing blocks that the guy made. So I think he's one of those players, and these are rare to find, that you can find as an asset as much in the run game as you do the aerial assault, because he is more than willing. There are a couple of games that you watch him and you say, man, he is being really physical and, and using his frame to its maximum. So, uh, you know, a lot of these guys have tight end next to their name, but really they're just oversized slot receivers. Uh, Darnell Washington is, is one of those that he doesn't mind getting his hand in the ground and getting dirty with the big nasties. Well, speaking of the aerial passing attack, let's look at Washington as a playmaker here. Once again, from that Missouri game, a day in which I think Washington really made kind of a name for himself. And you see here, this image on your screen lined up against a defensive back and Someone we've just described before is 275, 280 pounds, yet in terms of the big stride he's taking here, the ease with which he you know, moves and runs down the field, this is certainly not a guy that runs as if he were 280 pounds and a matchup nightmare for many in opposing defense, including that Missouri defense from back in December. Yeah, so, so there was a couple games for Darnell that really stood out. Missouri is one, and then uh, the bowl game against Cincinnati late, last game of the year. But in, in this, if you're the quarterback, picture yourself, you're in shotgun, you look over and you see your big number zero lined up against a 5'10 slot corner. You got to like that matchup, especially knowing that in this particular route, he's on a little go route. So, B, I don't know if you're a basketball fan, but we are in the middle of March Madness right now. If you've got your point guard lined up against your center, I wouldn't mind lobbing it up there and having faith that my center is going to come down with it, right? So, you look at these matchups, and before the ball is even snapped, you're going, man, I like the advantage that we've created just on uh, uh, alignment and assignment. You look across from them, and you go, man, good things can happen here. And as this play played out, uh, Darnell goes up and, um, and snatches the ball like a, a power forward and 
you know, the cornerback had no shot at it. In fact, we'll show you the image of that right now. Uh, Washington getting up in the air, going over the shoulder, making a nice catch. And legend has it, John, you mentioned basketball, that when Michael Jordan in scrimmages games, things like things like that, when he had a smaller guy guarding him and Jordan was going to take him down to the low post and post him up, the phrase that Jordan liked to use was mouse in the house. And, you know, in other words, if a guy was too <laughs> small trying to guard Jordan, Jordan thought he had the physical edge. He'd holler out mouse in the house and call for the ball. There's definitely kind of a mouse in the house mentality when you've got these much smaller guys, 5'11", 6 feet tall, you know, watching a, you know, almost a basketball style, 6'7". You know, there's pretty clearly some, you know, mouse in the house type mentality there with that as well, with his ability to just to be bigger than the guy that's trying to guard it. Doesn't that look like easy money? I mean, to oh, yeah. me, this is easy money opportunities for Georgia's offense. Just, I mean, this isn't some creative scheme. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our six, seven athlete, try to put him in a position where he's going up against someone who's nine inches shorter than him and throw the ball up. I mean, I, sign me up for OC if that's considered some high level thinking, but you create these matchups and you utilize them uh, down the field, down the sideline. You got to like the advantage that's created just by the players that you got. We're going to hear from Kirby Smart on Washington from this game here in a moment. Let me also squeeze in one more image here on this, though, from another game you mentioned, bowl game Cincinnati, where in addition to just being bigger and stronger, you know, this is a game in which he also showed some pretty nimble footwork there as well. And it's, listen, you know, the science of deciding who's a five-star and who's not is one of those things that I think has always fascinated me. But when you do see both versions of Darnell, just bigger than the other guy. And then the Cincinnati game, a guy who really put that size in motion and really used that footwork, you know, to get around a would-be tackler. It becomes very easy for me to understand anyway, why it was that Washington was, you know, sort of singled out as a five-star coming out of high school. Yeah. So this is why I like the kind of juxtaposition of these two plays in particular. One is I'm taller than you. I'm a better athlete. I can jump up. We're going to make it pretty easy. This second play against Cincinnati, he's going across the middle, and it's less about his height and more about his size and athletic ability once he catches the ball. He, he knocks off two defenders, two would-be tacklers. He hurdles another guy and uh, spin move in the middle of it. I mean, just an incredibly athletic play and, and matched with his size dominance. And across the middle, not every play is going to be a fade route outside the numbers. Here he is in between the hashes, making a play on a ball that, you know, it's, it's dangerous territory. There's a lot of helmets coming at you, linebackers, safeties. There's a lot of defenders in the center of the field. But yet he's a guy that you know, no fear shown and is able to get those yak yards after the catch because he knows what he can do with the ball once it's in his hands. So Heck of a play that complements what he can do on the outside. As far as what Washington was able to do as a playmaker in the 2020 season, Kirby Smart did talk about that, as I said, after the Missouri game. Here's a reminder of that, why Kirby saw lots of things he liked for Darnell. Certainly a huge challenge for opposing defenses. Let's listen to Kirby once again. Yeah, I mean, Darnell's, Darnell's been a weapon all year. It's been, it's been us trying to find ways to use him. I mean, he, he has a unique combination of size, and he's a hard, he's, you know, he's a tough matchup, and Coach Munkin really likes using uh, multiple tight end sets. It's done a lot in the NFL. And if you can mismatch people and, you know, have ability to run the ball, but then also flex them out and throw the ball, it's really frustrating. You know, if you go back to that play, the, the corner went over, the safety had to play Darnell, and he's saying, wait a second now, I got a, I got a, I got a Darnell on a safety, and those guys don't cover for a living. And, uh, you know, he made, he made a nice throw. But you can never have enough good tight ends in the SEC because they're big – they're athletic. They can catch the ball. There's so many things they can do. So it's, it's one of those things that we want as many as we can get, and we want to get them the ball. So getting the football is obviously part of the job here this year, but also, as we said before, Washington, because of his size and because this is what tight ends are asked to do, be a threat when it comes to the blocking game there as well, whether it's additional pass protection, certainly in the running game there as well. I want to go through a couple of images on this with you, uh, John. Once again, from that Missouri game, When you see Washington as a blocker here, what do you see from him and what kind of weapon is that for your rushing attack when you have someone that does almost act like an extra offensive lineman, at least in terms of his size component in there working in that, in that scenario. 
Well, it, before we jump into this actual this play, let's kind of break down what Coach Smart just said. Multiple tight end sets, um, using them as weapons, and trying to diversify your offense, which, I mean, we're talking about Darnell Washington and his potential of what he can impact this season. You watched the film last year, and it was it was John Fitzpatrick making a number of plays, not just in the pass game, but in the run game, and Trey McKitty, who's graduated out. So there is space for that multiple tight end set that, you know, it's not always – you know, two tight ends at the end of the line of scrimmage, a balanced set. These guys get flexed out, and, and you're creating different opportunities. So I think Coach Smart kind of let us in on the ways that Georgia can attack. And you know, Munkin's background of the NFL, that's they're constantly looking at ways that they can create mismatches. And if you got you have two tight ends that can block and be be receivers from a slot position or even wider, that really attacks the defense. Now it's got to be balanced with the ability to to block. If they're not uh, functioning tight ends, which is uh, dual roles, one is a receiver, but also I need you to be able to get down and dirty and create space. Then a defense will just chalk you up as a tall wide receiver. Uh, but but what you're seeing here, what you see against uh, Missouri in this play, is Darnell's willing to. I mean, he he gets after it, man. He he was a guy that. When asked to uh, be at the point of attack, when trying to create space behind him, he was able to do that and did it exceptionally well at times. I think you're just hoping for more opportunities where you get Fitzpatrick and Washington out on the field and try to challenge that defense. How are you going to match up? Are you, are you going to plan to stop the run? Because we've got two big bodied tight ends that like being physical. Or are you going to try to bring in a third safety and play the receiver game against them? I, I think you can really create some uh, challenging matchups for a defense when you have guys with their you know, physical gifts and also their willingness and ability to block. Let's look at another moment from the Alabama game earlier in the season, Washington blocking on a rushing play there for Zamir White. Tell me what you see in this particular image. So, so this is this is a hard block because Darnell is matched up against a defensive end in, in, in Alabama, and his job is to put his foot in the ground and stop, create some space between him and, and McClendon to create a little hole there. Most tight ends they either they either get position and get washed all the way down. There's no space between the tackle and the tight end, or they're behind it and and never get position and. The, the defensive end is right there to make the play. So to get position and stop the defensive end is a real challenge for any tight end. And what's about to occur here is Darnell gets position and creates a crease between the rest of the offensive line as they continue to push the D line out. And their seam is created between that right tackle and tight end spot because Darnell with his big size, gets position and is able to stop an SEC high level, high caliber defensive end to create enough space for a touchdown here. Point of attack play, difficult block in line from a true freshman that ends up in, in a touchdown against, uh, you know, uh, one of the hardest opponents Georgia faces all year. It was a really impressive block and should be encouraging uh, for this 2021 season and more to come. Finally, a pass blocking opportunity from that same Alabama game with Stetson Bennett kind of out on the move a little bit. What do you see from Washington here? Well, again, it's, it's his ability to uh, use his frame, play in space, and execute on whatever is being called. I, you know, those two primary games for him, the Missouri game, the Cincinnati game, I thought he had a couple moments of blocking in the Alabama game, but it's just putting together that whole picture for him. You know, Coach Martin said it earlier in, in this segment that we're just trying to find ways to get him out on the field more, utilize his skills. And part of that comes with the maturity of this being year two for him in the system. You probably didn't come right out of high school ready for the, the, the wear and tear of a practice, of a season. And now you've got that one year under your belt where you're, you're better prepared for these opportunities. The more you can do for an offense, the more Darnell can do uh, in the pass game, in, in various run blocking, and then as a protector for the quarterback on the move, 
the more opportunities he gets to be on the field, which is a really good thing for Georgia. Let me sum this up, John, to kind of wrap up our conversation here. When you see Washington now in his second year in the program, do you see someone who's still kind of a complimentary piece for this Georgia offense, or do you see someone who can be one of the focal points on many Saturdays for what Georgia wants to do offensively? That's absolutely the hope. And I think when you saw him last year, he was tight end number three. I mean, at best, you had Fitzpatrick out there. McKitty was the other tight end that you saw primarily. And then they would try to create some opportunities for Darnell to, you know, get a taste of the game, utilize what he does, but in a very limited way. Uh, for, for this offense to really blossom, if you will, we, you just lost arguably the number one wide receiver in the country for the great b- better part of this season. You're going to have to find ways to uh, supplement that. And having a tight end with his ability to stay on the field longer for more plays, whether it's in the run game, whether it's in pass protection or out on a route, that can really help this offense uh, find other ways to replace one of the biggest weapons in, in college football. We've all said some version of this over the course of the last few days that obviously the George Pickens injury is a disappointment, but Pickens was far from the only playmaker that UGA has at its disposal for this season. Clearly Darnell Washington is one of those. John, thank you so much for a terrific breakdown of what he can do for Georgia, what he did do a year ago, what we can see more of him from in 2021. Excellent stuff. Uh, John, thanks for being here today as a part of Dog Nation Freeze Frame presented by Engineered Solutions of Georgia. It's always a pleasure. Go dogs. And to all of you, it's a pleasure to have you with us here there as well. Hope you have a great weekend. Obviously, Georgia spring practice rolls on. We'll be back to talk about another big UGA player next week as a part of Dog Nation Freeze Frame. We'll look forward to seeing you then.